Hello, how are you beautiful people? All right, so um, I guess now I need to show you all how to program a ubiquity switch. So what do we got going on? All right, so here's what we're working with here. Do I have a flashlight? I don't think I've got a flashlight. I need some kind of a light source so that you can see what I'm looking at. You squeaky monster. There we go. All right, so here's the setup that we're gonna be screwing around with right now. Yeah, I'm just using this old 2011 because it's like perfect just for basic programming and lab work. I got tons of 2011s for lab work. They work kind of good. All right, so let's go over here now. All right, so this is a shitty, cheap a switch 5xp try to stay away from these ones because they do have known issues now especially with there's a 100 meg throughput bug in them and they just don't have the power to do anything useful anymore they were good back in the day they are no good no longer Let's stick to the edge points and the edge switch uh 16s and 8 150s and stuff like that they're much better Okay, so now to program VLANs on this guy here. Uh, I've already logged into the switch and can I do a split screen here? I'm gonna so since this only has five ports in it. I can't do anything really exciting with it. So what I'll do is I'm gonna take three ports and make them access point ports, and then I'll take one port and make it a backhaul port, because it's only a five port switch. This is just a very, very simple little configuration. I just wanna show you guys how to do this. Okay, so first things first. Uh, I'm actually using the SFP on the 2011, again, for doing this UBNT switch. So, oh my God, this hat's so hot. It's making me sweaty. All right, so uh, in here, let's label these first of all. Okay, so this is going to be, see here, we'll make this bugger off. AP West, let's click on the check mark to save it. Label all your shit. AP North, East, South, West, South. Is this thing even working? Oh, there we go. Okay, AP East, and we'll click on the check mark. And AP North. Well, no, we can't do that because we need to backhaul. Okay, so we'll go backhaul to hell. There we go. Okay, so when we're setting up the uh, APs here, we're gonna put the APs in their own bridge group. So we're gonna create our first VLAN, which is 4000 here. Uh, the reason why I choose 4000 is because it is a VLAN that uh, you will probably not use anywhere else in your network. So I use them for your tower-based last mile bridge. So it'd be 4000, and then the last digit would represent, or last set of digits would represent the tower number. So tower one would be 4001, tower two, 4002, tower 10, 40, 10, tower 20, 40, 20, right? So I typically do that, that's my labeling structure. And the reason why I do it that way is because I find that it makes things a lot easier for um, keeping track of your VLANs and whatnot. Wow, Windows, you truly are a piece of trash. God, I love Linux so much more. All right, so now what we're gonna do is in this uh, VLAN configuration here, I'm gonna untag all the APs and and, oh yeah, that's right, they don't carry over the names across interfaces on the Ubiquity ones. Hmm. All right, so first things first, I'm plugged in the management port, so it cares not what I do. So I'm going to untag these three ports, okay, in this bridge group. And then because port one on this switch of the five ports is the trunk port, it's gonna be tagged on port one. Okay, so we're gonna call this one the client bridge, like so. So what this is doing right here is it is grouping uh, ports three, four, and five as untagged in this bridge's broadcast domain. Okay, ah, oh, this is, ew. So that means that uh, these three ports are part of VLAN 4000 on this switch. When you plug anything into ports three, four, and five, they are untagged traffic. They are operational within the broadcast domain of three, four, and five, which is then tagged on port one, which goes back to the router. And if we look in the router here, I'll create that VLAN. VLAN. 4,000, well, we'll just call it customers, right? All right, now the name goes up at the top. The bottom is where the actual action happens. So this is where you actually tag it, okay? And I'm tagging it on the SFP interface because that's where port one on the switch plugs into. You get it? That's the trunk. Okay, so we'll hit okay here. And there's our first VLAN. Now I'm gonna label the SFP port, SFP one, and then uh, switch zero port one because that's where it's connected okay that's another little labeling trick that I've got so I can keep track of things okay so we've got this now there's another VLAN that we need so I'm gonna add that right here and that is the management VLAN so VLAN 1001 is typically how I label it you manage uh, we set it up like that we're setting up the tag here so VLAN 1001 is now tagged on the SFP interface on here Okay, so that's two tagged interfaces. Notice how they show up as additional interfaces because they are actual interfaces in the microtech. Okay, so they're tagged. When you see them dangling down below the interface that they're connected to, like dangly things, that means that they are tagged onto that interface. To untag them, you need to do this. I'm gonna go here and create a bridge. I'm gonna create two bridges, okay? We're gonna go last mile and we're gonna create another bridge called Management. Management Phonetics, okay? Now, we've got these two bridges here, okay? So these are now the parent interfaces. These are, the, the bridge themselves is the parent interface for the grouping of ports that makes up the bridge. So now I can go in here 
And oh look, I'm gonna add 4,000 to last mile, and I'm gonna add 1,001 to management, like so. But I deleted those from the last video. Hmm. So now if I apply an IP address, like so, to the, the parent bridge being last mile, 100.64.0.1 slash 24, like so, that's going to be the subnet that, oh, wrong interface. Nope, did I put it there? I did, okay. So that's gonna be the IP, the gateway IP for that bridge. It's gonna be, well, the IP address that's been anchored to that parent interface to that bridge. And in doing so, that means that uh, any interfaces that are present within that bridge are gonna see that IP address as well, okay. So now let's add the management. No, that's exactly, uh, 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 there we go. And we're gonna stick that on the management interface. We're not gonna put it on the management VLAN. We're gonna put it on the management interface because that's the parent interface. And you always apply uh, services that involve the broadcast domain like IPs or DHCP or any of that stuff, a PPPoE server to the parent interface, okay? So that's in there now, all right? So we've got customer and management, and those guys are in their respective bridges here, like so, which means that these ports here, UUU, are now untagged here, tagged on one, which carries them over to this router here, where there is a tag for 4,000 on this interface, so this interface is looking for that tag. And then if you look in the bridge here, it is now untagged in this bridge because that interface is present in the bridge, so it untags that interface, okay? It strips the tag. Okay, so now let's add our management VLAN. Ooh, 1001 and this is safe and this one's gonna be customer last mile customer like so save that cool now we can tag this across all the interfaces except for the interface that is going to act as the point-to-point -point, which is going to be port 2 on here okay so yeah port 2 so what we're gonna do here on port 2 is uh, we're gonna create a VLAN for port 2 so 102 right you know because it's switch number one port 02 right you get it huh three digits, it's really easy. If it was switch number two, port two would be 202. Okay, so, and again, this is just my labeling scheme that I came up with, okay? It, it just works, I like it. There we go, tagged, untagged. So it's tagged on the trunk port, which is ethernet one, and it's untagged on port two, point, point, link, like so. So that's now a port-based VLAN. So we can now apply these changes. They are now applied. All right, so now let's go to the main interface. We need to make sure that port isolation is enabled on here. Okay, so I'm gonna click on the gearbox here. Oh yeah, that's right, on this, which certain ubiquity switches don't have the ability to add port isolation through this interface, uh, which is kind of obnoxious. I'm not a fan of that. So I can't actually add the port isolation through here, so that means that I have to go back to the legacy interface and I have to add the port isolation, but I'm just gonna double check. Yep, not seeing it in there, seeing it in there. So we're gonna have to go here, log out, and see if I can find the legacy interface. It does not look like this switch actually has a legacy interface on it anymore. Huh, is that ever wonderful? So then in that case here, let me show you how to get around that because you need to make sure that you've got port isolation, okay? So seeing as that's the case, we can't do, this is actually a good little side swipe, okay? So we can't actually do this uh, bridge 4000 like I originally intended. We're gonna have to do port-based VLANs on uh, all of these guys to ensure that uh, delete. Yeah, so I want to delete it. That means that we're going to need to make a port-based VLAN for all of these guys. So we're going to go 103, 104, and 105, like so, okay? So these are our port-based VLANs, okay? So this is going to be AP West, save. And this one here will be AP, come on, you bastard. AP Northeast South, there we go. And AP East, like that, okay? So now we have to do a port-based VLAN for each one of these interfaces because there's no port isolation on this switch. Okay, so that being the case now, this is very, very easy. We're gonna make sure that um, VLAN 1001 is still tagged on all these guys now, but watch. Okay, so we're gonna just, um, we're gonna tag this one here, we're gonna untag it there. So it's tagged on the trunk port, port one, but it's untagged on the port that it's supposed to, port three. Now we go like this, there we go, like so, and here we go. So now we've got our management VLAN tagged on all of these ports, and we've got each port tagged on their appropriate trunk, being port one, and untagged on the appropriate interface, which matches, okay? So now, what we've done here is, if you want a VLAN to exit an interface and be present on a broadcast domain, you need to make sure that that VLAN is tagged on that interface. If it's not tagged on the interface, it's not going to leave the interface. Now, if a VLAN is untagged on an interface, that means that the tags are stripped and the contents of the VLAN is now exposed to that interface. So it's kind of like if I was to, here's the VLAN, so this is the Ethernet port right here, okay? And then this would be the VLAN here being encapsulated as soon as it goes into this tunnel, it's creating a tunnel. So now this data here, I drop it in, all right, it's in the Ethernet port, but now it's going up through another interface with a tag on it. 
So when it leaves the interface, or the bridge group, I should say, a tag is applied to it. So if you look here on the screen, let's see here, for example, port 5. If you plug something into port 5, all the data on port 5 is going to enter that broadcast domain for that bridge. It's going to be part of that bridge because that's what it is basically. It's a bridge on the switch, okay? And then it's gonna leave port one with a tag attached to all the packets. That tag is gonna be VLAN 105 because that's a designated VLAN that we're working with here. That's what the bridge is on, VLAN 105. It's part of that. It's kind of how this works in this interface, I guess you could say. Um, so that's how that works. Uh, when it's you on a port, it's untagged, which means that whatever you plug into that port is going to be injected into the VLAN. It's going to be inside of the VLAN. When there's a tag on the port, that means that that VLAN is being passed off on that port to uh, whatever network is plugged into that port. So that's why if you look back over here, we've got the APs as three, four, and five untagged on their appropriate interfaces and then tagged on the trunk ports here. And then you've got them double tagged here. So you've got a tag for VLAN 1001, which is the management, which is tagged on the trunk port and tagged on the AP ports. So now why do we do that like that? Because you can't do port isolation uh, through the GUI here. You have to actually do it through. You actually have to do it through the uh, legacy interface or through command line, which uh, I'm not going to even bother showing you guys command line on here because it's not fun, okay? And we're working on the GUI stuff here to make it easy for you guys. So let's add all these VLANs now. All right, so I'm gonna add the other VLANs through the actual VLAN tab, which makes it a little bit faster. So VL102, and that's the point-to-point -point link. So here we go. The VLAN ID is the tag, okay? And then the interface is where it's tagged on. So we've got VLAN2 point-to-point. Uh, VLAN105 is AP West, and that is tagged on this interface here, like so. And then we will add another VLAN. So VLAN uh, 104, AP South. Okay, so 104 tagged on that interface. Okay, and now for three. VLAN 103, AP East. Okay, now I'm showing you how to do port-based VLANs on all of these guys. And the reason why we were forced to do it this way is for the port isolation aspect. So now I'm going to add all these ports. We're going to add three to last mile. Let's see here, we're going to add four to last mile. And we're going to add five. Like so, okay, so now that those guys are in there, we need to make sure that they have port isolation between themselves um, so that I'm gonna remove 4,000 because it's not there anywhere. And we need to make sure that port isolation is enabled to stop any contamination across the interfaces. So like if somebody plugs in a router the wrong way, like little Mary Lou Dahmer, you know, oh shit. My internet wasn't working properly, so I was fiddling with it and I plugged in the LAN interface to my PoE. Well, so long as you follow the uh, last mile isolation video like I showed you, where you have client isolation enabled on the access points and then on your switch and or bridge on the router, you've got uh, port isolation, layer two isolation, and that's just all the problem. To do this, and remember, I'm doing this in a router. Now, if you're doing this in a Microtech switch, this if you don't do it properly, it will actually kill your hardware. Wow, my brain went fucked up. That will kill your uh, hardware support for your switch because uh, when you're working with a switch, it's very different from a router because it doesn't have the horsepower. It's using a switch chipset. So without your hardware offloading, your CPU is going to shoot through the roof as soon as you start pushing any kind of packets, right? You want to make sure that the interfaces are actually doing their switching, their you know transit through the switch interface, otherwise, or the switch chip. Otherwise, yeah, it's just going to shit the bed. All right, so here we go. I am adding a horizon value of one here. But you can see that there's no hardware offloading on here anyway, so fucking who cares? It's got so much horsepower on this thing, it's fine. All right, so there we go. So now, <clears throat> by having these th uh, three ports that are all on the same bridge have the same horizon value, it means that they cannot intercommunicate with each other. But they can communicate with the parent interface, which is the bridge itself, last mile, right? Does that make sense? Now, something else which I need to show you is the importance of spanning tree configurations, okay? So you don't necessarily have to do this, but I'm just showing you because it's an extra step, okay? Um, so in spanning tree here, number one, make sure that the spanning tree that you're using, so RSTP, which is very standard, is also enabled on the switch, the same spanning tree. Otherwise, if they are different spanning tree protocols, it will cause your life to go to shit. It will fuck everything up and you will regret every decision you made that brought you to this point in your career. So don't do that. Now, the other thing as well that I should mention to you is bridge priority. So by default, if you hook this up, it's fine because all the traffic wants to go to the root port and the root port is determined by the bridge with the lowest uh, number, which is the highest priority. Lowest, lower number, higher priority. So if you look by default here, you'll see that the priority, this switch is 32768, right? Now, if you look at the uh, bridge priority on the micro tickets, 8,000. So naturally, that's gonna be 
um, delegated. It'll be um, uh, elected the root bridge, okay? So then all the traffic will go from here to the root bridge, to the root interface. That's how that works. It's actually kind of cool. And I don't know if it'll show you that in here. I don't think knowledge is that through the switch, so that's kind of shitty. I really should get a large ubiquity switch so I can show you guys this sort of stuff. Something with a lot more functionality, because this guy here really has jack all for like any kind of functionality. Maybe I'll get another edge switch 8150. They're kind of pricey, but whatever. So we've got our ports set up here, and they are <coughs> all uh, port-based VLANs back to the router. And like I said before, once these VLANs are present on the router, it basically brings the ports from the switch into the router. So you're basically creating external interfaces on the router. You're you're using the ports that are on the switch as ports in the router. You're just basically, you're adding ports through an external device, that's all. So you're bringing them into the router using the VLANs. So we look here, all the VLANs are tagged on the trunk port, which is SFP1 on this one. And that's also, yeah, I'll get rid of this one by the way. It's, it's no good. Which is then the trunk port here. That's where the tags are for all these guys here because the VLANs are coming in from that one port, right? And then they're untagged on the appropriate port-based port, you know, the VLAN port. So now, seeing as uh, VLAN 102, as you see that it's not in a bridge group here because it's a point-to-point -point link, this is how we apply the IP address to it. So we just apply it directly. We just take uh, VLAN 102 like so. And 10.64.200.1 slash 29. There you go. So that's now the point-to-point uh, -point interface. And then you can go into your OSPF and set it up or do port-based routing or, uh, sorry, static routing or whatever. But yeah, that's basically it. As you can see, it's very simple to set up. And on the equity switch, you don't really have any options. You either have tag, exclude, or untag. Whereas you've got Q and Q on the uh, Natonic switches, which allows you to actually nest VLANs. You can stick a VLAN inside of a VLAN. It's kind of cool when you're doing a uh, entirely bridged network. It's got its points. It's got its purposes, but uh, you can be just as efficient by uh, tagging and untagging and doing weird things like that all over the place. It is kind of handy when you can stick a VLAN inside of a VLAN. So I guess you can start doing like almost like virtual private networks like VPN kind of you know what I mean layer 2 VPNs all right so that's basically all I've got to say about this guy so that's uh that's the ubiquity uh one in the bag it's like 1049 here I got a Shanghai so I'm trying to get like a couple of VLAN videos done tonight so I apologize if I'm a idiot right now but go into the comment section and don't forget to uh mention any points that you want said or any corrections that you might have don't forget to like and subscribe below tell your friends and we also have a patreon if you want to help the channel out it does cost a bit of money to run the channel, so I do thank you for that. You keep us all fed, and thank you to our patrons.